this is how I'm running the race. Uh, like I said, Paul was on another level here. He was running this race to win. He said, and this is what I'm doing. Um, all athletes train. They discipline themselves to win a prize. But, you know, if we're talking about an athlete, it's, it's a prize that's going to fade away. We are running a race for an eternal prize. Mm -hmm. He says, I do not run my race without purpose. He said, you know, I, I'm not shadow boxing because I have a goal. I know what my end goal is. So I run every step with purpose and I discipline my body just like I was an athlete um, and in training. Otherwise, he goes, if I didn't do that, he goes, if I didn't discipline myself, run my race the very best I could with, with a with purpose and with a goal and um, in with a mission, he goes, you know, after I preached to everybody else, I could possibly dis be disqualified. And this is how we, each of us should be running our race with purpose. It is why one of the reasons there is so much depression in our society um, without people realizing it is they have no purpose. There is nothing in their life that gets them out of bed in the morning. There's nothing that they get out of bed excited about. They have no goals. They have no mission. They have no driving force in their life that puts a spark in their eyes, you know, energy in their body, because that's literally what it does. Purpose gives you energy. Purpose gives you life. Purpose changes everything in you. When you have something that's pulling you forward, when you have something that's driving you forward, it makes a huge difference. Yes, that as well. Um, not having an identity in Christ, that also causes depression. Not knowing your worth, which also causes people to think, which freezes people in, in, in the sand because they don't know their worth, they don't know their identity, then they don't move forward because they don't think they have, who's gonna listen to me? That's the whole purpose of that, Satan in your head telling you, who's gonna listen to you? <laughs> who are you, you know? When you do realize who you are, and that's why I, uh, started this i think with the uh, proverbs the proverbs 31 woman how she changes how she changed my life told me who i was who i could be who i'm supposed to be and can do that can do that for each of you as well you know if it, if it did it for me the word is life it can do it for you um absolutely completely change you and gave me uh, what it did, it gave me, I, I hate to get up in this changes, but it's kind of what we're talking about here, um, a thirst for all things growth um, related in, 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 in every area of my life. It gave me a thirst for that. So, and I, and that has not gone away to fill myself with knowledge in various topics where the Lord leads so that I can teach. I have to prepare myself so that I can help others. You know, that's the purpose for it. It isn't, of course it helps me, but it's not for me, right? You know, he, he, he can't use this if we don't make ourselves usable, right? We wonder why, well, we'll ask ourselves, why am I doing this? Why am I going through this? Why am I here studying when my friends are out eating this evening? You know, things like that. Why am I committed to this the hard path when I could be doing this easy path? Because God's got a plan. 
for each and every single one of us, you know, and to get us to that place, it is a hard path. It, it is a path of preparation. It is a path of refining, you know, of, of building. And that's why you're doing it. You're doing it because um, God's got a, God's got a place for you. And there's people out there waiting for you to get there. Every single one of us. Um, Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3 says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, write the purpose, and engrave it plainly on tablets so that the one who reads it can run. Okay, so here's the first part of this. When you have a vision, you have to write it down. When you have a purpose, you have to have write it down. You have to have those things in front of you. This is an age-old uh, technique that is literally from the Bible <laughs> saying, if you have no purpose, if you have no goals, um, if they're not written down in front of you, then you don't have uh, you don't have anything that's going to cause you to run to move forward. You know, it has to be in front of you. You have to be able to review it so that you can read it and you can go because you have a plan, you have a goal, you have a purpose that you're moving forward uh, in. And then the, the rest of that, the second verse, uh, verse three says, for the vision is yet for an appointed future time. Um, it hurries towards, towards the goal of fulfillment. It will not fail. It may seem like it is delaying, but wait patiently for it because it certainly will not come. I certainly will come. It will not delay. So even though it feels like this thing that perhaps God told you that he's, that he has for you, um, or you may not even know what that is, but you are faithful and you step in the, put your foot in the water and, and you, and you write your vision. This takes a routine and we should all have one. We should all have a morning routine. And it really should be in the morning. We should make the time for this to be in the morning because if we don't, then our day is a wreck. When we get to the end of the day and we're like, what happened to my day? <laughs> well, it's because you didn't plan your day. You didn't start it with God. You didn't make a plan for your day. You know, so you get to the end of the day and because you didn't plan it, well, you not planning it is a plan to fail. So. You really have to plan, you have to have an idea for each one of your days. So you start out in the morning. This is a, a good little way to do this. You know, you have your Bible time. It might be a devotional, depending on how much time you allot. Okay, you have your devotional time, prayer, uh, sitting uh, with God, journaling, you know, speaking to him, <laughs> giving him time to communicate back with you. And then you write out what your plan is for the day. Um, you might have three goals for the day. I promise you, if you write down those three goals by the end of the day, you will have completed them because your mind is working on it. it. It wants to complete it because you've written it down now. It has some kind of thing, some kind of me mechanism that now it's there. You wrote it down. Um, and then even better, when you check mark that you've done it, then you get a literal dopamine boost serotonin boost it's it is science based okay so oh check mark <laughs> you know and you get this boost um and then you go on to the next thing that you wrote down in front of you now you should start your year with you, you know you should start your year with what your goal is for the year your purpose is for the year and they should be and it should be specific and it can be in your finances it can be in uh, your career, it can be family, it can be in your health, specifics in those areas, you know, um, it could be in also the things that you wish to have. And you write down those things. Um, and then you, each day, you have the goals that you set for yourself each day to complete. Um, every quarter or so, you go and you look at your main goals and see where you're at and you adjust. But this is a process and it's an ongoing process that you should always have in front of you. In fact, 
one of the things that doing so say you're having a day where you're just in your mind chaotic you're full of anxiety one of the very best things to do is to sit down just take 10 minutes take 15 minutes of closing the door <laughs> sitting down putting a journal in front of you and writing down what's just if writing down what's causing the chaos, writing down what do I need to do next? When you put it on paper, what's going on, where you're, what you're stressing about, where your anxiety level points, your points are. Um, usually it's because you didn't actually start your day with a plan. And so it creates causic, it creates chaos in your mind. It creates chaos in your body, literal, literal chaos. When you sit down and you write it out and you, and, you, and you put everything down on paper, it literally makes that anxiety and stress and chaos that's going on in your mind, it just, it just wipes it away. Because you put it from here, you put it here, you've got a plan, <laughs> okay? Even if it's just for the rest of the day, thank you, Jesus, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, from here to here and now it's not such a thing and you can and you can see it it's on paper and it's going to get you through the rest of your day if we start our days every way every day like this it's very less likely that we're going to get into those anxiety chaotic spaces um because we start the day with a plan but if we find ourselves there then get sit down and figure it out on paper Another way, which um, another way, if you find yourself in um, trying to figure out something and you can't figure it out and, and you're stressed about trying to figure out what your next step is, and it's getting to perfect weather where we can start doing that, get outdoors, take a walk, then ask the questions, Jesus, how do I do this? Help me to figure this out. He'll give you the answers. As you're getting out in nature and you're getting out in the sunshine and you're getting out in the fresh air and you're getting out with God, <laughs> you just get out and start walking and commune with him and he'll give you the answers and he'll give you, and he'll give you peace. Um, kind of off topic, but all in this realm of when we get in these stuck places, a, a lot of times it, it's, it's our, it can be our own fault because we haven't planned our days. We don't, we don't run our race with purpose. 